Hi everyone, this is grade four, lesson six, history of the radio. Let's begin with our objectives. First, unlock vocabulary words based on context and use them in sentences. Second is recognize the features of an informational text. So the history of radio is an example of an informational text. Third is demonstrate or show reading fluency and comprehension skills. Let's go to vocabulary in context. Number one is alarmed. The young girl was alarmed or scared by what she heard on the radio. So maybe she has heard of an upsetting news or she's listening to a scary radio program. So alarmed in the sentence means scared or frightened and surprised. Number two, reacted. The couple's favorite song came on the radio. They reacted with smiles. So how would you react if you heard your favorite song over the radio playing in the car or in your phone? You would be happy, right? So you would also join in the music, like this couple over here. So reacted means to act in response to something or to change as a result of making contact with someone else. Number three is convey. The crowd cheered to convey its support for the team. So there are many ways of conveying your support or giving encouragement to the team of your choice. Like this crowd over here, they're blowing off confettis, they're shouting out cheers. So convey in this sentence means to communicate. So they're communicating their support to their team and it's the same as conveying a message. So when you convey a message, then you communicate a message. Number four is daring. Only a daring person can be a mountain climber. She must be very brave. So daring in this sentence means to be very brave or to be adventurous and unafraid. Like the girl that you see here over in the picture, she's not scared at all of the slopes and the difficulty of navigating through the snow-covered mountains. Number five, luminous. On a clear night, a full moon is luminous. It is very bright in the sky. So what is the meaning of luminous in this sentence? Luminous means very bright or brightly lit. Number six is awe. The couple was in awe at what they were seeing. They were shocked. So just look at the facial expression of these two. So maybe they have witnessed something amazing or out of this world. So awe in this sentence means shocked or to be filled with a sense of wonder. Number seven, indescribable. What the man saw was indescribable. He could not put it into words. So he cannot explain what he has seen. So indescribable in the sentence means something that is hard to put into words or something that's hard to describe. So you can use the prefix in for you to unlock the meaning of indescribable. So when you put the prefix in before a word, it means not. So it is not something that you can describe. Number eight is extraordinary. The boy watched as the basketball player made an extraordinary or amazing shot. So extraordinary in the sentence means amazing. Apart from context, as discussed before, we can also use suffixes and prefixes attached to a word in order to unlock the meaning. So in this case, we have the prefix extra, which means beyond or outside of. So extraordinary means beyond ordinary or very unusual and remarkable. Number nine is fade. The music on the radio began to fade as it became quieter and quieter. So that usually happens, of course, when you turn the radio off or when you turn down the volume, right? So fade means to gradually grow faint or disappear. In this case, it's the sound of the radio. Number 10 is comparing. The TV reporter is comparing with the police to discuss the details of the accident. So look at the picture. They're speaking with or communicating with each other. So when you confer to a person, you discuss with that person. So conferring means discussing. Now let's discuss the genre of the history of radio. So this text is an informational text, which gives information about a topic. 
the information can be organized under headings and informational text often includes photographs. So let's discuss briefly the features of an informational text. We have mentioned before in lesson three because we had the same genre in My Librarian is a Camel that informational text would include headings or titles within the text that would help us know what that section of the informational text is specifically about. And also it includes pictures, diagrams and labels and captions under the photographs. So in this particular informational text, we would also see a graphic organizer that's called a timeline. So more on this as we go through the text. Now let's proceed to the text focus. So we'll be looking at a historical text for this lesson. It's a kind of informational text that tells about a topic in history. Most of your social studies lessons would be under the historical text uh, subgenre. Now, it is usually told in sequential order with dates as well as transitional words to help readers keep track of events. So when you say sequential order, it means chronological order or a specific order in terms of time. Now, historical text often includes a timeline that shows a series of events. So we're going to have to look at which events happened before other events and also how the history of radio progressed from the very beginning and how it has developed to the type of radio that we know today. And what does the timeline in this article show? We're going to have to look at that as well. Now let's go to The History of Radio by Vivian Fernandez. We're going to discuss only the summary of this text. You are tasked to read the entire article, which you can access in e-resources tab of the school portal. The beginning of radio, so this is your heading. We can't see them, but radio waves are all around us. In the late 1800s, Guglielmo Marconi used radio waves to send and receive a signal through the air. So at first, it only went on short distances, but he kept working. And uh, finally, he was able to send signals over several miles, over distances. Now, by the early 1900s, people were using radio technology to send and receive messages, but these messages were not voices. They had to be sent in Morse code. So Morse code is a system of communication wherein letters and numbers, they have representing dots and dashes. So you have discussed about Morse code and your historical topics in social studies before. Then on 1906, Reginald Fessenden made the first transmission of speech and music. So from Morse code, it has transitioned to speech, meaning voices, and music or sounds. And he had found a way to change the sounds of voices into a signal that could be carried by radio waves. So the early version or early appearance of the radio could be seen here in this picture. You can see a family sitting in their uh, living room and listening to radio programs or listening to news over the radio. Now, another feature of the informational text, as we have discussed earlier, is the presence of photographs like this one. So this is your caption for the photograph. You would know that this is Orson Welles, who had directed and performed in many radio plays. So captions add information or give information about the photos included in the informational text. And you would see in here a very interesting picture of an old radio which people have used in earlier times. So let's go to another heading, radios in the home. By the 1920s, more and more people had radios at home and they listened to the radio like we watch television. Many listened to music, but soon radio stations came up with different kinds of programs which were broadcasted live. So families could listen to music, comedies, and stories, and one show was maybe too exciting. It was the War of the Worlds, and it was turned into a movie starring Tom Cruise. Millions of people listened to the radio show about an alien attack. So uh, these programs served as their form of entertainment before because there were no televisions, there were no mobile phones uh, during the earlier times. Now let's proceed to the future of radio. So today, radio has a lot of competition because we have turned to television and movies for entertainment. And also, we have used the internet for 
uh, news and for gathering information and also when we want to do leisure we're using the internet radio which does not use radio waves so the problem with regular radio is that it's limited by how far radio signals can reach so it can only work in specific distances but in time we will see if radio survives this new kind of competition so now let's have a look at some photos and some trivia about how radios were used in earlier times. So many people first heard about the sinking of the Titanic over the radio. And millions of Americans listened to President Roosevelt's fireside chats on the radio as well. So now let's go to this timeline about the early days of radio. So timeline is a graphic organizer. Graphic organizers help us organize and understand information in a more visual way. So a timeline is also a graphical representation of key events that have happened in history. So in a timeline, you have your year and the description of the event, the summary of that key event. So for example, you have at the first event, 1895, Guglielmo Marconi sends and receives first radio signal through the air. And then it skipped to 1901. So in 1901, Marconi receives first radio signal across the Atlantic Ocean. It made the skip because there were no key events or important events that have happened between 1895 to 1901. So that's how you do or make a timeline, right? So after 1901, you have 1906, wherein Reginald Fessenden sends first transmission of human voice. And then it goes on until you reach... 1926, first national network is formed, the National Broadcasting Company, or the NBC. So the events in a timeline are arranged in chronological order. So using a timeline can help you practice the skill sequencing events in a historical document. Now let's talk about how we can connect this lesson with our national identity. So do you know that we have Qatar Radio? Yes, and it is abbreviated as QR. It is a Qatar government-owned public service national radio station, and it is also owned and run by the public service broadcasting network called Qatar General Broadcasting and Television Corporation. It is multilingual, so meaning it broadcasts programs and news in Arabic, English, French, and Urdu. So our sources are Wikipedia and CatcherRadio.qa. So please do check out our Reference and Resource Journeys 2017 Grade 4 Student Book, which you can access in the Resources tab of the EIS portal.